Observe closely the unsettling tremors and repetitive movements in Adolf Hitler. Potentially suggestive of a pill rolling tremor that we see in Parkinson's disease or repetitive movements that we see within the spectrum of movement disorders. The question arises, what factors possibly contributed to this manifestation? Did Hitler have Parkinson's disease? Or is there a deeper, more sinister narrative to uncover? In the shadows of history, where the battles were not only fought with weapons, but also with the mind, one substance secretly shaped the course of World War II. In this video, we explore the powerful influence of methamphetamine on Nazi Germany and its potential effects on one of history's most infamous leaders, focusing on Adolf Hitler's personal battles with addiction and how methamphetamine not only fueled a war machine, but also led to unimaginable horrors. Did methamphetamine shape the course of history? Let's get started and explore the mysteries behind the Third Reich's drug use. Hi, I'm Dr. Sunil Rege, consultant psychiatrist. Welcome to Psychiatry Simplified, the channel where we cover all things psychiatry and neuroscience related. So if that's your thing, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and stay in touch with all our future releases. In the late 1930s, the introduction of methamphetamine, known as pervitin, heralded a new era for Nazi Germany. Touted as a miracle drug, it promised superhuman endurance and vigilance, characteristics that perfectly aligned with the Nazi ideology of physical and mental superiority. Pervitin became an integral part of the Nazi war effort, consumed by soldiers to sustain the relentless pace of the Blitzkrieg. The concept of the Blitzkrieg, or lightning war, depended heavily on the unyielding advance of the German troops, facilitated by methamphetamine. Soldiers were described by the British press as fearless, heavily drugged, and berserk, pushed through the Ardennes, a feat that was deemed impossible by the Allied forces. The price of such chemically enhanced warfare, however, was steep, leading to widespread addiction and severe side effects amongst the ranks. Now I've covered the devastating impact of methamphetamine on the brain in another video, so don't forget to check that video out. What was interesting also was that methamphetamine pervaded every aspect of German society, even making its way into confectionery. Hildebrand chocolates were laced with methamphetamine. They promised efficiency and weight loss. Yet the true horror of the dependency became apparent later. The German military began to witness the debilitating effects of methamphetamine overuse, leading eventually to an evaluation and eventual reduction in distribution. Nazi Germany's leader, Adolf Hitler, was not left unaffected. Under the care of his physician, Dr. Theodor Morel, Hitler began receiving daily injections of Eucodol, a powerful opiate, alongside high doses of cocaine and possibly methamphetamine. There are some papers that suggest that he was receiving methamphetamine as well. Now this concoction of opiates and methamphetamine, a very powerful stimulant that releases significant amounts of dopamine, noradrenaline and serotonin resulted in unnatural bursts of energy, allowing Hitler to deliver impassioned speeches despite his deteriorating health. Circling back to the video that we saw at the start, the repetitive movements and the possible pill rolling tremor are usually indicative of basal ganglia involvement. Basal ganglia is a key part of the brain subcortical that are responsible for movement. They're also responsible for processing speed and cognition as a whole. However, many basal ganglia disorders are expressed in the form of movement disorders. For example, Huntington's disease. Parkinson's disease, which involves the substantia nigra. However, we also know that methamphetamine affects the dopaminergic pathways of the striatum, which is really the basal ganglia, and has a neurotoxic effect. In another video, I talked about how methamphetamine reduces the dopamine transporters and has a neurotoxic effect on the dopaminergic neurons and has a strong association with Parkinson's disease. There are historical descriptions of Hitler's movement disorder. One such description states, Hitler developed a tremor which affected only his left side. It's possible that his tremor developed sometime in his mid thirties. His left arm was hanging down and he dragged his left foot. His speech was low pitched and hardly intelligible. 
His facial expression became rigid, and saliva occasionally escaped from the corner of his mouth. Speer, another author, wrote in his memoirs, In 1944, Hitler was shriveling up like an old man. His limbs trembled. He walked stooped with dragging footsteps, a classical description of what we see in Parkinson's disease, the shuffling gait. His uniform, which in the past was kept scrupulously neat, was stained by the food he'd eaten with a shaking hand. This time his right hand, indicating that in 1944, his Parkinsonism was bilateral. It's possibly the reason why some suggest that Hitler's left hand was held in a semi-flexed position and tucked against the buckle of his belt in order to conceal the tremor. A paper suggests that Hitler most certainly had Parkinson's disease. Here is an example of the micrographia that's present. This paper also highlights a number of other features that point towards the presence of Parkinson's disease. However, when one combines the early onset, the significant use of methamphetamine in Nazi Germany and the prescription of cocaine and possibly methamphetamine to Hitler by his physician along with opiates, it's very likely that there was an organic factor, which is the methamphetamine that contributed to these neurological signs and symptoms. Norman Ohler, who wrote the book Blitzed Drugs in Nazi Germany, shed light on the ghastly consequences faced by young Marines and the German population under the influence of methamphetamine. He talked about how these soldiers were strapped in their metal confines. Soldiers experienced psychotic episodes, losing touch with reality. Similarly, Hitler, isolated and dependent, spiraled into a world of delusion and paranoia, with his health ravaged by methamphetamine addiction. So did methamphetamine amongst Nazi forces and Hitler's own drug dependency shape the outcome of World War II? We'll never know. However, the intertwining of drug abuse and leadership decisions within the Third Reich offers a cautionary tale of the dangers of substance use in the pursuit of power. As we reflect on this dark chapter of history, one must wonder how much did methamphetamine not just shape a leader, but also the course of history itself. I hope that you found this video interesting and fascinating. If you like this video, don't forget to leave us a like. Don't forget to write in the comment section what your thoughts are on this dark period of history. A big thank you to all of you for supporting this channel. I really, really appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Until then, stay curious. Bye-bye.